do you think you're too old to be a flight attendant? Do you want to be a flight attendant? Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Martha and this is my moxie life. So I'm coming at you today from the hotel room. Look at my fancy chair. <laughs> Today's video, what are we going to talk about? Four years ago when I started investigating becoming a flight attendant, I posted a video titled, Am I Too Old to Be a Flight Attendant? Here's that video. So uh, I realized <laughs> after it's gotten a lot of uh, views that I really never answered that question. So I wanted to do an update. I've been wanting to do this for a while. So if that's interesting to you and you want to find out, are you too old to be a flight attendant? Please keep watching because I'm about to tell you the truth. Okay, so here we go. Um, do you think you're too old to be a flight attendant? Do you want to be a flight attendant? Well, here is my story. I have been asked a bunch of times about um, age and how age affects being a flight attendant. And if you can be considered to be too old to be a flight attendant, especially when you're getting hired, what do they look at? And uh, does it matter how old you are? And how do you feel? And what did you do to get hired? And what's commuting like? And what are crash pads like? And I have some notes, so if you see me looking down, that's why I wanna make sure I get all the information in. Um, and also, the number one question I get asked is, what about money? Can I afford to, at this point in my life, change careers? Because I know a lot of people are going in at the single and they don't have another income to rely on. And so that's a big, big, um, thing to think about a big th hey guys I'm coming at you with this commercial break from my backyard I wanted to do a shout out to someone named Brooklyn who is a junior in high school in Michigan and she reached out to me to write a report for school and asked me some really cool questions and uh, I wanted to just tell her thanks for reaching out to me and I appreciate it and I hope your report went well and I hope you start that YouTube channel soon and I look forward to seeing you out as a flight attendant as soon as you're ready. All right, Brooklyn, thanks, have a great day. So this becoming a flight attendant is a big change. There's a lot that goes into that. Um, I've had three careers in my life, if you could call them careers. So I never really went at in thinking that I was gonna do one thing for the rest of my life. I started out uh, when I graduated high school thinking I was gonna be a physical therapist and somehow went on to become a teacher. So I was a teacher for about 10 or 12 years and then that kind of segued into becoming a personal trainer and a CrossFit coach, which uh, kind of deviated along the way to different kinds of gyms and um, training like that. And so when my kids grew up and my oldest graduated from high school, I kind of started to think about changing that. And I was 46 when I became a flight attendant. And honestly, there's only one time in that process that I thought about my age affecting me being able to pursue this career. And that was when I was trying to get hired with Alaska Airlines, which is the first airline that I interviewed with. And a lot of the people in that room that day, there was about 50 of us, were very young and very cute. And only three people got invited to training from that room. So I don't know if it had anything to do with them being young and cute. I have no idea, there's no way, and they obviously wouldn't say that. But I did feel that a little bit. I just kind of sensed that that was part of the thing because you know none of us older mamas got hired. Um, but that was also the day that I realized that I really, really, really wanted the job. So let's look back a little bit. Historically, if you look back, like when flight attendants first like started working as flight attendants, um, it did seem as though it was a job for the young. And why? Because that was absolutely the case. They only hired you if you were young. And much of the time, uh, it was mostly women although the original flight attendants were actually men and they called them stewards. Um, so it was kind of like, you know, when, if you ever read about like ships, like back in the early days of ship sailing, the guys that would carry your bags and everything, those were called ship stewards. And so it just transferred over to when you, people started flying and having um, help on the airlines, they were also called stewards. So it was actually mainly men 
in the very beginning, and then it kind of transferred into a woman's job. Um, but they had to be young, they had to be thin, they had to be unmarried, and um, they originally had to be registered nurses. So if you were not one of those things, then you were you might as well not apply, need not apply. So um, that was the, the beginnings of being a flight attendant. You absolutely, and I think some of that still carries over into our thinking when we look at getting this job. So those days are over, my friends. Those days are over. We don't look at that anymore. I've trained and worked with many men and women who are my age and older. They're stable, they know what they want. This job does not come without challenges for the older or the younger or the thinner or the heavier or whoever you are, there are challenges in this job. I've worked and trained with younger folks who couldn't hang with the job. They just couldn't stand being away from home. The money wasn't good enough. Commuting was too hard. They hated being in crash pads. So it, it's really a kind of person. It has nothing to do with the number of years you are. So currently, the oldest flight attendant is 87 years old. 60 now, years ago today, Betty reported for training at then Eastern Airlines, which is now American. Betty says back when she first earned her wings. You had to be a certain height. You had to be a certain weight. It used to be horrible. You put on a few pounds and then you had to keep weighing yourself. And then if you stayed that way, they'd take you off the payroll. Not exactly the golden days of air travel. Now, I don't know how much she's working at 87, but when I read the story from when she was 84, she was still flying a little bit and she loves it. And she said the only thing that would stop her from flying is her health like if her health starts to break down and you know prevents her from flying then obviously she can't fly but she's been flying a long long time um so do i want to still be flying at 84 i don't know i would think as of right now i would probably say no i don't imagine that at 84 i want to still be flying but who knows what the future holds. I just take one trip at a time and see how everything goes. It is nice as you get further on in your seniority, you have so much power over your schedule and you can pick the days you wanna work, you can pick the places you wanna go. And usually if you don't wanna work, someone will take your schedule because it's such a great schedule. So the things you get as you <laughs> progress in the job, you know, as years pass, um, kind of makes it worthwhile, worth staying. And if you need insurance, you have insurance. And uh, you do keep building up that retirement. So I wouldn't say I would absolutely not want to, but I definitely want to give up that drive to LAX. I'll tell you that much right now. <laughs> I would definitely lop that off if I could. But if I had power over my schedule, then I could only do, I would only have to do it every once in a while maybe, or pick and choose. Um, I would say some of the biggest concerns for most people are commuting and crash pads. I get a lot of questions about commuting and crash pads. I have the luxury of having a spouse and having a financial, I have the luxury of having a spouse that I can lean on uh, for financial stability. Um, so I, so I understand that it is a big leap to jump into a job that the pay scale is based on seniority. So you don't start out um, at like a great pay rate because you're a great person. You start out at the bottom like everyone else who starts out. So that is a little bit of a challenge for a lot of people. So my best recommendation is to research and find the company that has the best package that you can live with, especially at the base rate for about two to three years. Most companies uh, at about the three to five year point um, take a good jump and you usually are making enough to where you can survive. And I think that at that point, if I had to, I could survive on my own pay. Like if for some reason I needed to do that, um, I could do that on my own. Um, living in California, it's obviously a little bit different. It just depends on where you live and um, you know the cost of living. But that first couple of years can be a tough adjustment for sure. So commuting, uh, it can be considered an extra job. It, uh, it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of energy to figure out when to go, where, like where you can fly out of, at what time. 
and sometimes you have to use your days off. I commuted to start from Detroit and then Houston and then Dallas and I live in California and it was a little bit stressful sometimes and sometimes very frustrating and I couldn't get home. I'd have to just stay in uh, wherever I was and wait till the next day, which in some cases, especially in Detroit, like that almost made it impossible because it was a whole day to get back to work. And so, you know, I, sometimes I didn't have enough days off to cover that. So that was kind of frustrating. Um, some people commute for years and years and are just fine with it. Their seniority, after a while, their seniority is so good in another base that they just want to stay there and keep commuting because it's worth it to them to get the, they get the good schedule, they're able to move it around and they can work that commute. And you know, wherever you're commuting from, you want to have at least enough flights that makes it at least somewhat doable. Um, even during like the hot times like spring break, summer, when it's really hard to get on flights. Thankfully, my company has a commuter clause, which my first company did not. Um, so that means that if I'm commuting and I try to get on flights and I can't, then uh, they'll cover that trip. And then I'll just have to make up that trip at some other point in my schedule whenever I can. So there's a little bit of a gray area on how <laughs> that makeup works, but that's not this video. <laughs> When I first started commuting to Oakland, it wasn't as time consuming, but I still had to, you know, figure out what time to get to the airport and I had to be in base, depending on if I had a reserve or a trip, you have to be in base a certain amount of time before that. And so, you know, you have to, you have to kind of juggle things around and then you go to the airport and then flights get canceled or they get delayed. And, you know, it can, it can get a little, it can get a little tricky and a little messy. And uh, then sometimes you get stuck, like I said. Um, and when I was commuting before, I had crash pads. When I was in Oakland, I did not. So I had to decide, was I gonna spend money on a hotel room or just crash in the lounge in a recliner? So <laughs> there's lots of things to be weighed out, but it doesn't mean you're too old. It just means you have to decide if you wanna work with those crazy, crazy things that happen. All right, so I don't wanna make this video too long, but I do wanna wrap up and just say, I don't think there's such a thing as too old unless you have limitations, being on your feet, uh, being able to, you know, adjust to long, long days, um, possibly, you know, going a while before you get to eat or have a snack, um, things that you might have to work around. It doesn't mean that you're too old. It just means that you have to figure out how to adjust to your own personal circumstances. And sometimes things are just not sometimes jobs are just not for everyone and that's okay but I don't think it has anything to do with age it just has to do with your willingness to put yourself out there and see if you like it and if you don't you're not married to it I know it is a commitment to go through training um, but let me just tell you there's a lot of airlines so if you don't make it through one training you're always welcome to go to another airline they do not look down on you because you didn't make it through training. You can't go back to that same airline usually for six months to a year, but the other airlines don't care that you didn't pass the other training unless you got kicked out for doing something terrible. So I just want to say, I don't think anybody is too old unless you think you're too old and you're just not up for the challenge. So I would love to see more of you uh, reaching out and asking more questions about flying. And if you want to uh, know more about aging <laughs> on the planes, I am 50, oh, I'm 51 on Monday, y'all. Monday's my birthday. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Everybody celebrate. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. And I hope this was a, some, somewhat helpful to you. And I will see you on the next on the flippity flop. And if you like this video, why don't you put a ring on it? Give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.